Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host Janet Michael. We are sitting outside on a lovely Monday afternoon. I am in the secret garden at the espresso bar. Shocking. I know. Katie Harvard is here with me. We're going to talk about Historic Garden Week. So it seemed only fitting, Katie, that we sit in the secret garden at the Espresso Bar and have this conversation. I totally agree. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I am excited because you approached me about having a show to talk about Historic Garden Week. I know that there are garden tours happening later this month in April. You're a member of the Little Garden Club. Tell me about the Little Garden Club. <laughs> I am, and it was started because it's in Winchester and they had little gardens. <laughs> That's where the name came from. Little Garden Club's been around over 90 years, whereas Garden Club of Virginia or the Historic Garden Week had its centennial in 2020. So this has been a long time that we've been supporting growing and growing. <laughs> and blooming. Yes. And yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> blooming is a perfect word. Yes. When you talk about the longevity of just Historic Garden Week in general, it's all across the state. Yes. So this is done across the Commonwealth of Virginia. There have got to be gardens and homes out there that have trees and things in them that are even older than Garden Week itself. That's right. That's right. Like Mount Vernon, the money from the Historic Garden Week goes to restorations. And so we've got a number of restorations here in Winchester. John Hantley, mm -hmm. they did something there. Belgrove. <gasps> Belgrove was on the tour two years ago, the State Arboretum. We forget mm -hmm. all these things are in our backyard uh -huh. and they have this gardening component to it. Belgrove has the teaching garden. Yes. And Blandy is all teaching. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so the money goes to places like that where people can learn from it. And the economic impact of Historic Garden Week is major. You get 26,000 people in the state of Virginia. And of course, they're coming from, I can't remember, but there's a tour that comes from out west. Really? Yes, consistently. They plan it uh -huh. around not, this week. Not Winchester necessarily, Yet. but the week. Yes, yes. So they'll get to us eventually. They <laughs> probably will. Uh huh. Exactly. That's right. And I could see that because we have planned vacations before uh -huh. to other places around particular events or things that are happening in a locality. And when we do that, we're staying for maybe a week. For at least a weekend, yep. we're getting a hotel room, we're staying in a bed and breakfast, we're eating, we're shopping, we're doing all the things so that economic impact oh, can be huge. It is huge. Yes, it is. There's gardening tours that are available that are happening on Saturday, April 27th, but you do that in partnership with the Winchester Clark Garden Club. You guys yes. have this really cool symbiotic relationship. We do. We do. Because it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> it used to be, like I was on the Eastern Tour of Virginia, and we had two days that we had houses open. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yes, it is. And other tours did that as well. Now, we only have it for one day, which makes it a lot easier. But what makes it even easier is that we do. We work together. And one of us, which this year it's Little Garden Club, we are the main club for lead. lack of, yes, we take the lead. And Winchester Clark helps us. They do the floral arrangements for one of the houses. And then their members will be in the houses helping. We couldn't do it without each one other. One or the other would make it, it would be very yes. difficult for either one of you individually to pull off yes. this feat. And what's neat too is that Winchester Clark has a lot of their houses in Clark County. Mm -hmm. So you're getting entirely different houses from houses in Winchester. Not always, but. It is, it's different. The, one of the things that I've learned, we were joking before we started recording about my relationship with the Master Gardeners. But one of the things that I've learned from talking to so many of them is I can grow something in Middletown that they can't grow in Berryville. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. crazy that we're only 20 minutes apart as the crow flies, and right. yet there are different things that I can grow that they can't, uh -huh. so the gardens look different, even if the houses might be so. Uh -huh. It's neat. And the houses, for example, this year on tour, they're virtually city houses, mm -hmm. and so they have city gardens, and that's fun. You are the region rep for Historic Garden Week, so yes. you help coordinate or are the point person for this entire region. What's yes. that like? What kind of work is that? Oh, it's not bad and it's fun. We have two meetings a year in September and in March, and they're just different milestones that these groups have to reach or have to pay attention to. And so we're just there meeting with them and making sure that they understand where they need to be before <laughs> before it hits them in right? the face and they're going, <laughs> what am I doing? And so I actually have been having our meetings at MSV 
which has been really fun. You want to pick a good garden I that know. you don't have to pull weeds in. Exactly. That is genius. That's right. <laughs> Plus, it's good marketing for MSB. Some of these ladies are like, ah, I've never been here. This is awesome. So that's been fun to be able to pull them in. And actually our tour this year, MSV, MSV has always been our headquarters. Well, mm -hmm. not always, but in the last few years it's been our headquarters. But this year the gardens are actually on the tour. Which is really nice because yes. sometimes people need an excuse. And it's hard. I've had the MSV on the show multiple times. I've been out for a ton of their exhibits. But sometimes we don't think to just go there because. But when there's right. something like this that we know we want to see all of them on the tour, uh -huh. it's a really great reason to make the effort to go to the MSV. Yes. yes. And also, with them being headquarters, it made it easy. We're having our tea there as well in the pink pavilion. And that's from 10 to 4. And then we're also having our little store, which we don't always do, meaning little garden clubs, little store where we're going to be selling just different gardening things and oh, vases. I am all and, in for a shopping I know, experience. I know. <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, last year, Winchester Clark had one, and I came home. Now, I did use my wreath, but some <laughs> of the other things, they were such quirky, fun things. I couldn't resist them. So out I walk. I don't even know how much I spent. So. Yes, we have a rule in my house, and whenever there's something that catches my attention that I want to buy, Tim always says, where are you going to put it? And I have until he counts to three right. to tell him. And if I can't tell him by the time he counts to three, I can't uh -huh. take it home. But I go to these types of things by myself. So yes, nobody is of there to ask me that question. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's right. It's on Saturday, April 27th, Yes. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some of the houses and what's going to be featured at them. Is there a certain order that you should take, or can you start anywhere? Well, they are very close together. And the parking is going to be down at the end of Fairmont, across from National Fruit. Then there's a shuttle if you want one. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's going to so, be handy if I have things that I have to carry. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. But it's all on the western side of Fairmont. Coming from that direction, your first one will It probably be, does make sense to do them in a particular order. It does. Your first one coming from that direction would be Dunheath which is 445 Fairmont. And that's the one that has the long drive back. <gasps> yes. Yeah, that you can't really see. You just <laughs> get a little glimpse. But that's on the tour, and that's going to be really neat. That was built in 1869. That's the other cool part of all of this. Uh -huh. Wow, no slight on new homes in the right. area. But it just adds a whole different flavor yeah. when you're able to walk through the gardens of a home that was here pre-Civil War right. or in even built during Civil War. Uh -huh. It just adds something to the whole atmosphere. It does. It does. And their Italian styles, they're all part of the Victorian era. Era. Right. So the last quarter of the 19th century, like 323, reflects the changing taste of the end of the Gilded Age to the early Progressive Era. 409 Fairmont was built in 1880, Queen Anne Colonial. And they actually have some neat gardens in the back. Japanese-inspired rock garden with a water feature. Ooh. So that'll be neat. They have an herb and vegetable garden. And the really neat thing about them is in the house they have an Let's see if I can say this, an orangery. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Back in the 18th century or whenever, I don't know when they actually were started, but they were like greenhouses for citrus trees. Oh. So that's where they got their name. And now they have other things in there, herbs and a banana tree and that kind of thing, but they've got some citrus trees. And that's in their house. What? On the second floor. Yes. That is crazy. I know. At least I'm pretty sure it's on the second floor. So that's really neat. Yeah, I really would hope neat. so because those trees can get yeah. down at all. That would be a little complicated if it's yeah, on the first it would, floor. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then 417 Fairmont is Italian at style. We've talked about Dunheath. And that was a 40-acre estate of William L. Clark. And as we've already discussed, it sits mm -hmm. way back on that lot. And it's Italian at Villa style. It's a neat house. But they all are. They're really fun. And of course, the owners have redone inside. So you get to see their style as well. So it'll be a really nice tour. Plus, you don't get too many walking tours. So that'll be really fun. 
Let's take a break. Sure. We are recording in advance as we do every single day, except for Gauze. Sitting at the Secret Garden at the Espresso Bar, Katie Harvard is here with me. We're talking about Historic Garden Week happening in Winchester on Saturday, April 27th from 10 to 5. We're going to get details about how you can get tickets for that when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Don't let a cringy DJ ruin your wedding day. Celebrate confidently instead with Summit Events Co., the premier entertainment company in the Shenandoah Valley. Summit Events is serving 200 couples a year with five-star reviewed DJs, photo booths, 360 booths, live music, and more. You can celebrate confidently with Ben Savory, Summit Events founder and chief party officer who was just named the Top of Virginia Entrepreneur of the Year. Don't risk your wedding. Book a professional at summiteventsco.com. That's summiteventsco.com and on Instagram at Summit Events Co. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are pre-recording today in one of my favorite spots. We are at the Secret Garden out back at the Espresso Bar on the Old Town Walking Mall in downtown Winchester. Katie Harvard is here with me. She's giving me all of the scoop for Historic Garden Week Garden Tour Day for Fairmont Avenue, which is pretty exceptional. It's one of the most beautiful historic streets, I think, that we have in Old Town Winchester. Is the highlight of the tour, but the MSV is also involved, Katie. But I need a ticket. I can't just <laughs> randomly show up and think I'm going to get to go into these people's homes or backyards. Right. I got to buy a ticket you first. Gotta buy a ticket. How do I do that and how much are they? Right now, they are $40 for the four houses and MSV. That is until April 26th, the day before. So there's a little bit of time left. There's a little people. bit of time. The day of, they will be $50. The tickets up until the 26th. You can get off of virginiagardenweek.org. And that's vagardenweek.org. vagardenweek.org. Okay. Okay. You can get at Kimberly's. Oh, nice, another excuse to go to Kimberly's. Exactly, <laughs> isn't it? And you can get at MSV. We've handed out brochures everywhere. <laughs> of course, Kimberly's has them, MSV has them, but they're in a lot of other places. Like First Bank has guidebooks. Bonnie mm. Blue has information. And you really want to get one of these guidebooks. It is substantial and you can plan because it is Garden Week. Winchester, Fairmont Avenue and your tours are happening just the one day. But that doesn't mean we were talking earlier that I can't get in my car and drive to Leesburg, for exactly. example, and tour Garden there too. The guidebook has all of the gardens in the state yes, of Virginia. Yes, it does. And you can get it digitally on virginiagardenweek.org. And one of the neat things that I noticed about them, I'm trying to find that in here, is that there are questions in the guidebook that they address. And of course, like I'm frequently oh, oh, like, asked questions. Do house and garden tours sell out? Are tickets available on tour day? So we've answered that to a certain extent. What if it rains? Is photography allowed? So all those children, what ages? The guidebook has that kind of information in it. But the guidebook has information on every house that's open in Virginia. And when I get to the ones on your particular tour uh -huh. on the 27th of April, there's going to be somebody there to greet me. I'm not just going to be a <laughs> random stranger walking through no. Jay and Allison Smith's <laughs> home saying, hey, y'all, I want to see your <laughs> gardens out back. Yeah, yeah. There's no, going to be right. somebody that will guide me through and explain some of what I'm seeing. Yes, absolutely. Because you're going to see the inside of the house. So there will be people there talking to you about the different rooms in the houses and then the gardens. To Depends on the house as to how big the gardens are. Some are small, some are big. You'll get to see the house and whatever gardens they have. But then you've got the gardens at MSV and we will once again have people there who will talk to you about the gardens. But yes, when you come to the house, we said the tickets before up until the 26th are $40. And then on the day, they're $50 and you get that from Virginia VAGardenWeek.org. Garden Week. Yes. If you want to go to a house, just one house, who does that? <laughs> you never know. Well, but they she might. Could be crunched for time. Yes. Or maybe it's a house that was in your family three right. million years right. ago or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes, exactly. $25 for just one house, and you will buy that at the house. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes it nice yes. too, because maybe it's late in the day. 
Yes. Maybe exactly. you didn't get your $40 ticket and it's suddenly 3 o'clock and this thing exactly. ends at 5. That's right. So that makes a little bit more yes. sense. Yes. About how long do you think it usually takes at each house? I guess it depends on the person and how long they want to spend. Yes, but I would say it's not that long. Like you said, it depends on how much the person wants to, but I'd say no more than really probably 30 minutes. That's a really good amount of time. Uh -huh. You could start in the morning, do all the houses, yes. end up at the MSV. Yes. Or you could start at the MSV. Exactly. And then go do all the houses and then come back to the MSV. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and what they're going to do too this year is if you buy yours ahead of time at MSV, Kimberly, you're going to get a band. A wristband. Yes. Okay. And they'll see the band at the different houses and know that you can just come on in, that you've already paid. Now, once again, Again, that does not count for the individual house. You won't get an armband for that. You just walk in to see the house. And, and you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation about a tea. Yes, the tea is at MSV at the Pink Pavilion, and it's from 10 to 4. So and I can, so you can oh, go. See, have, I could start to have a cup. Yes, you could. And go look at all of the houses, and then yep. come back, have another cup, and then shop, <laughs> and then go. Home. Absolutely. <laughs> that sounds like the perfect day. It doesn't is it? perfect. <laughs> yes, it is. And it you've is. got all day to do it. Yes, you do. Which makes it yes, nice. I, I could yeah. imagine, though, it's really cool to walk through to see somebody else's garden and how they've incorporated it into the interior design of their home, uh -huh. how mm -hmm. they've incorporated the history uh -huh. of these homes in particular into their gardens. But it's also, I love going to these things to get an idea uh -huh. because I may oh, walk absolutely. through and think, oh my gosh, I never thought about using that for this to uh -huh. grow that in it. Uh -huh. This is a really great way to just expand your creativity yes. and figure out what you could do that you didn't think you could do before. And one of the things I have not mentioned, which I can't believe I haven't, is the floral arrangements that the garden tours do in each of the houses and so you're going to see some magnificent flower arrangements and they're really fun and they have lists of the flowers that are in the arrangements and so you can learn from that as well those are really fun and it's important to note I mean I understand this just because I have things in my garden right now that still look dead <laughs> so I know my cone flowers are trying, but right. it's going to be another two or three months yes. before I see anything close to something that looks like a bloom uh -huh, coming uh -huh. from them. That's the other thing about this is expectation, right. is people need to understand that these gardens may look fabulous in June, July, or August. Right. It's been a little wonky weather-wise. Uh -huh. We've had really cold, and then we've had wind, yep. and then we've had a ton of rain. And yep. So you kind of have to temper uh -huh. expectations. Uh -huh when you're walking in, especially this time of year. Right, especially this time of year. And they want us to use in the floral arrangements, for example, as many flowers that we get out of our yards. But that can be hard. The, yes, because I don't, maybe I'm planting the wrong things, but I got <laughs> nothing. Well, I take that back. I have some tulips. Uh huh. I have some crocus. It's, yes, yep. But I don't have a lot of what we expect. I think sometimes when people hear garden. Huh? They think about sunflowers and they think about pansies right. and they think about daisies and all of these other things. Uh -huh. This it, it ain't depends. this time of year. <laughs> right. It is not. It is not. That will be the fun thing for MSV though, because they know so much about what they're doing and what's in their gardens and the list that we will have will be able to tell people hopefully most of the time or answer their questions as to what something is and that'll be a fun one for us as well. Can I I become a member of the little garden club of Winchester even though I live in Middletown and do I have to be good at gardening because if not then I'm out. <laughs> yeah exactly. You don't always have to be good at gardening no because we do a lot of things to teach people about gardening and so no you don't. We do things during the meeting where people bring a flower out of their garden and we judge them not to scare anybody but judging well, I'm is to. Judgy. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. really good at being <laughs> judgy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it helps learn. It helps people learn what their flowers are. As a matter of fact, we went to the Daffodil Show, which the Garden Club of Virginia just held down in Virginia Beach. And one of the members, Pam DeBerg, who's in Winchester Clark, is a judge. But she's a horticulture judge. And she Ooh. says, that's a lot easier than judging artistic. Oh, yes, because it's so subjective. Oh, tell me about it. Yes, it is. And she said, with horticulture, if there's a bug on it, eh, 
Yeah, <laughs> right? But you learn about that kind of thing. It's really fun. There are all kinds of things you can do in the garden club. It doesn't have to. I feel like sometimes people think they can't be a member of a garden club if they themselves don't have this beautiful, lush, big garden. Oh. And like you mentioned, the little garden club got started because you didn't even have space to do big, giant, lush gardens. And you asked me about my garden, and I said, let's not go there. <laughs> and you'll notice I honored your request and yes. did not ask about you specifically. Exactly. <laughs> so no, it's all about learning is what it is and not feeling put on the spot because you don't know everything about gardens or about flowers. You're there to learn. So yes, nobody should be scared about being a member of the garden club. I figure everything's going to die eventually. Right. <laughs> so it, some things of mine die sooner than maybe right. their life expectancy exactly. was. But my new big thing, and I'll share this before we wrap up, is colanders. Uh-huh. So I have a friend who has an online auction company over in Winchester, and whenever they have a box lot that has the old metal colanders uh -huh, in it, uh -huh. I buy a ton of those. Oh. And that's what I put my succulents in. Isn't or I'll neat? put regular potted plants in them because uh -huh. they're so much easier to water. Uh, yes. I can paint them. They're yes. metal, so I can paint them whatever color that I want. That is my new obsession. And I have Ooh. found a few potters that also do pottery. Mm -hmm. So then they're beautiful, but they have holes in the bottom. So there you go, there's my, I could be a garden club member because yes, I have suggestions. And what you have are the connections. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <You totally. laughs> yes. We could use those. Uh, but also, it's just fun being in a garden club because you're there with a lot of women, some men, and it's camaraderie. It's finding your trap. Because right. if you have the same love, it doesn't matter how good you are at it, as exactly. long as you all love to do the same thing. Exactly. Yes. So Garden Week, Historic Garden Week is the 20th through the 27th of April. Mm -hmm. Tours for Winchester are Saturday, April 27th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. VAGardenWeek.org. Go to the MSV and get tickets. Kimberly's. And Kimberly's and mm -hmm. get tickets. Mm -hmm. And yes. you're not going to go wrong in any of those, especially no. those last two. Because, right. again, I believe you can the enjoy shop just at Kimberly's. Going in there. Oh, darn. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you for meeting yes. up with me in the secret garden, which, as I mentioned earlier, is not all is that pretty as it will be in a couple exactly. more months. Exactly. <laughs> It'll be great. So we're getting a jump on it by going to this garden tour. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. This um, has been lovely. I will be back on Monday with a brand new episode of The Valley today, a few minutes after noon. I think we're talking about Earth Day with the Front Royal Aces. And sitting here right now, I can't tell you what Aces stands for, but they've done the show before. So you can search the Valley Today podcast icon feed and find out what we're going to be talking about and their Earth Day activities happening in Warren County a few minutes after noon on Monday.